and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Hinda, very many what's up? Wow, and what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? I'm chilling with your rapper's favorite rapper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Brody? I'm good, man. Ginger Trill in the house. Hey. Good to have you, man. Thank you so much. Um, glad to be here. I've been waiting for this day for a long, long time. Because yeah. uh, we at the household in my home, we like uh, fans of podcast and chill. So I've caught a couple. Yeah, I've caught a couple of them. Yeah. Um, my favorite must have been the one with Scoop. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that I was my favorite that. too. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I didn't even think I was doing that interview. I was so mind fucked after. I was like, what? The <laughs> fuck? You guys look like two dudes who knew each other from the past, <laughs> catching up and like just yeah. like connecting again and like you know just having good vibes. Yeah. Where we at now? <clears throat> is this your house? What's going no, on? no, no. We here at the Enterprises, my man, Explosives um, House slash uh, Lab. This mm. is where we create. In fact, this is where we created the last EP I dropped on the second of August, titled. PIF, that's an acronym for paid in full. Oh, nice. So, yeah, we at the Enterprise, y'all. Yeah. A- and uh, what other songs did you do here? Um, we did his, his single called Surround Me featuring Indigo Stella and Mani Badu. Um, yeah. We also did a couple of unreleased stuff. Uh, what else we do here? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just like maybe like anywhere between 10 or 15 records, but only six Seven are out. One of his and six of mine. Do you still remember the first time we met, bro? Hmm. I think we've met for the first time a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? Remind me. Joke uh, I think we were at a gig in the Val. Uh, you, I was DJ. Yes. I remember that janky ass promoter still ain't paying me my fucking balance. <laughs> you serious? I'm serious, bro. He just ghosted on me. His numbers didn't work after that. I don't even know why I took the gig. It was one of those, like, I had another gig. So I was like... Ah, let's go down this way. Yeah. I think it was you and and Sabi who were down there. Yeah. And, and myself. And yeah. I don't know who else. I remember it was a dope gig. Yeah. But that promoter, when I see you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was dope. Because I, I remember. remember you came up to me like, yo. Because I don't know who you were. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then you come up to me like, yo, man. I uh, used to listen to your wife, and blah, blah, blah. I love your shit. I'm like, yeah. right, cool. So what do you do? You're like, no, I'm an artist. I'm yeah. like, oh, what's your song? He like, ah, oh, no, I did. I'm on Tom Bazaar. I'm like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> we chopped it up a little bit after yeah, that. I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because for me, that song, dude, that song was monumental. I think mm. in the landscape of SA hip hop, I think you better school me in terms of SA hip hop because I'm not really that big into it. I love it, mm. but I'm not really like a, a guru, you know, like a scoop would be. Or, yes, sir. Or, or, or Caesar at Lomo, perhaps. Yes. Uh, but I know that song changed the landscape of SA hip hop, man. I think remix. so. I think so too. It was like a great time in SA hip hop. In fact, that circa, like 13, 14, 15 circa, mm. that was like almost us seeing the rise of SA hip hop. Like it catapulted and like create superstars yeah. from, from the culture. Yes, we've been had stars. Shout out to the guys who paved the way. RIP Jabba, RIP Pro. Shout out to Squatter Camp. Shout out to Flabba. Shout out to everybody who did it. But that year, that circa, you know, 13, 14, 15, I think that's when it just... And that particular song had, like, all these rappers who were in the game, all these young MCs in the game who were, like, from different cliques come together and make one song. And South Africa was more than happy to, like, rally behind it. So it was it was a pretty dope How time. did that song come about? Ricky, at the time, assigned to Motif Records. Yeah. I boom. Um, so he got the song um, Amanto Mazana featuring OK Malum Cool Cat originally that's doing the rounds and people are just going crazy. Yeah. Had he dropped Nafuqua yet? I think he might have dropped Nafuqua and then it was time to do the remix or the other way around. Yeah. So I get a call from, from, from the good folk at Motif like, yo, so we're doing this remix of Amanto Mazana. They didn't even ask me if you heard the song. They knew I heard the song. That's how big it was. Like yeah. We're we doing this remix of Amanto Mazana. At the moment, we've got Cuesta. We've got Muggs. Nadia's coming in. Um, we've got Okay Malum Cool Cat. Um, DJ Dimples was in Nana. Mm. And we want you to come lace your verse. Kid X, Muggs. Like, basically, just everybody in rap. Like, at the time, who was hot, who was making waves. Most of them still are, in fact. And I was like, uh, hell yeah. I couldn't believe they even called me for it. But I was more than excited. Um, it was right after we did, I think we did Bump the Cheese Up, mm. which was, which was, you know, which uh, had a successful run also. And then they were like, yo, come through. So that relationship with Motif 
you know, it, it just made it easier for them to connect me and plug me in. And I was with the with the gents on the song. Who do, who do you think murked you on, on, on Kidex, on definitely, without a doubt. <laughs> I say that today, I say that yesterday, I say that tomorrow. Yeah. Kidex killed everybody. Yeah. Despite of what you might think, uh, I don't care what you think. Yeah. No one cares what you think. Kidex killed everyone on that song. I, I like Mugs, man. Mugs. Thank you for thank you for coming to my TED Talk, McG. <laughs> Kidex killed the song. Mugs was cute. I was cute. Yeah. Everybody was cool. Yeah. Kidex killed it. He buried it. He took it home. Everybody, everybody has their favorite. That's that's the most um, exciting thing about having a remix with so many people on it. Everybody's gonna pick their favorite. There's people who swear by Mugs's verse. There's people who kill you if you say anything except "Okay, Malum Cool Cat." Mm. Oh yeah, he yeah. also came through. <laughs> He's the he, slap. He was the right. fan favorite. He yeah. was the fan favorite. But mm. that's I guess that was the point of it for everybody to pick a little bit of something that they like. And the thing is, uh, since that remix, we haven't actually seen a remix like that where you know rappers in the industry just get together and just have fun in a track. You know, yeah. it's 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 a rare thing now. You know, yeah, th- a lot has changed. Also, like with like you know success being a factor in like the the hip hop landscape in South Africa. You know, um, I see some of the more affluent prominent artists you know tweet about it and say you know it used to be so dope you know the vibe is dead now cats don't want to work together everybody's trying to get there alone or by themselves or to see who gets there first it's like a it's like a weird thing but i guess compet- it's it's a competitive sport like that but it that song particularly was the birth of like you know the the the, the uniting of sa hip hop you know because after that we got raga raga mm, which mm. was Major League, mm, Gemini, Casper yeah, yeah. Vest, Nadia. Ricky Rick, Nadia, mm. and you know it was it was a dope vibe. And after after Mantomazan, I think Raga Raga was the next. Oh, it's a remix with everybody. Yeah, but we also had P dot O. P dot O once had a crazy remix with myself, Kid X, Nve, Black Les, yeah. Books. Yeah. We even shot the video. Um, I forgot who we shot it with, but you know that that's been the vibe. But now it's now it's dead. The people are trying to be superstars how do you feel as ginger trill right Mm because uh everyone on that track went on to become like mega superstars superstars. i'm talking about ricky rick questa kid x nadia kai cool cat the list goes on and on yeah uh but you haven't to some extent reached those pinnacles yes how how does that make you feel ah man bums me out as you can imagine because um we'll all be at the starting block yeah all of us, you know, like imagine a hundred meter race. So everybody's there and then, and then you leave and then you see, okay, I'm at least number, <laughs> ah, it's not that bad. <laughs> and then by the 50th meter mark, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on? You know, it, it, it bums you out, but um, um, all the L's I done took were lessons, man. You know, you, you, you realize, I mean, I take an L every year, I guess. You know, you, you learn from something because after that song, people expected all of us to drop albums. Mm. Nadia just dropped her album like the other week. Yeah. But she's a superstar now. Mm. And that song is like 2015, 14. Mm. It's like three, four years ago. And, you know, OK Malum Cool Cat is about to, 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 to like mess up the summer, in my opinion, with a project that he's going to drop. He also dropped um, the last one, which had and whatever yeah. he became a star ricky's like one album one mixtape deep but he's a mega star so you look at all those things and of course as you go to interviews people are like yeah so these are your peers you know mm. where are your awards where are your plaques where are your million rand endorsements and and stuff like that and all you can say is look man i put i put my products out you know i put the music out as often as i can I don't take more than two years between projects. If if I'm really sitting down, if maybe I'm struggling with whatever, I'm in between labels. But the best you can do is just like pick up the slack. Look at where you are. You're like, okay, I'm here. I want to get there. I need to, to see what I can take with me there. If I can't take anything, I load shed. Whatever I can take, I, you know, I take those lessons and, and go forward with them. You know, it's, it's a bit, eh, but I'm not too... I'm okay, man. You know, we, we keep pushing. I can resonate with you because your career uh, uh, and my career have similarities like in Crazy. radio. Because <laughs> uh, when I started at Y, everybody that I started with is like banging right now. They're Crazy. Like, like You're so right. Shows. <gasps> they got a million followers on, on Instagram and stuff man. like that. <laughs> and I'm still by the starting point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels like like you, you, you try and you, know, you were the crowd favorite and then... Something just happens, and I guess everybody's journey is different. Because but with my journey, I think more than anything, it was self-inflicted. 
Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, I lacked a bit of disciplined oh, and focus, you okay, know? Okay. So the talent was there. Yes, but there definitely, focus, undoubtedly. Okay. You know what I mean? I see you. Uh, you know, but I don't have any um, regrets or anything like that mm. because I think I learn more from my failures mm. than I do my successes. Mm. So with you, I can sit here and tell you why I'm not as big as, you know, like whoever I started with it. Why? Yes, of course. With you, what do you think the reason is? Because the talent is there, bruh. Man. And uh, you look like you're focused. You are disciplined. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, most times, I, I try to be uh, and throw throw all uh, my all into whatever it is that I'm doing. But if I had to give you like a real answer, mm. an interview answer, I'd be like, look, along my journey, and I, I only knew that in hindsight, looking back in hindsight, True. along my journey, there was things that I wasn't prepared for. I thought I was at the time. But when the opportunity came or when the moment came, it's either it was too big or I was not prepared enough. You know mm. what I mean? And, and those things do kind of happen where, you know, I didn't even know that people were going to be like, ah, about me at the mm. time when they were. Mm. And you find that, oh, snap, I'm like six months away from the album. The label is saying, no, 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 no we can't drop an album now. You, ha- you don't even have a single that's caught on. You're like, ah, a single. Who cares about a single? Okay, let's drop a single. And then that doesn't work for you. And then you try another one and then you move along. So it was like I had so much to learn. I had so many things to, to, to learn about the industry that I was in, the type of people that I'm going to, to like um, work with in the industry that I was in. You know, um, you learn that a manager is, mm. is such an important thing. You know, mm. uh, Something so small. Something so simple. But yet it's t- profound. I, I took it for granted for mm. the longest time, McG. But then you learn that you watch other people, some of the most successful people in the game, they've had like, they haven't either changed management too much or they've had the same manager yeah. for like seven, eight, nine years of their career. You need a team, man. It's you important. need a team. It's like so important. You need somebody who's going to be on top of the yep. public relations. Mm. Somebody who's going to be a publicist. Somebody who's going to be walking around documenting everything. Yep. Somebody who's going to tell you, yo, man, you, you did trash on that interview. Um, <laughs> you, should <laughs> you know what I mean? You need those kind of things. And I only learned that later mm. when everybody else was was uh, springboarding their career and, you know, catapulting into stardom and, and, you know, taking over Africa. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what I'm missing. You only learn what you're missing afterwards. Yeah. And that's when you can pick up the slack. I think that's where, you know, to apologize to my fans or anybody who, who felt like I might have let them down, man, I was tr- I, we, I'm always trying hard to, like, put out a, a good, solid project. Mm. But it's the things around an artist that actually make the whole thing move. But I remember I said to you that day at the Val, I said, Val Munatin Cafe. Yes. 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 Yeah. I was like, dude, yeah, it is as much as uh, all these guys that I started with are huge, but everyone has his, has their own time. It's something that's hard to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow that you one. You know what I mean? But it's so true. Because the thing is a marathon. It is. It's not a sprint. It's not a sprint at all. You know, it's about longevity. It's about how many people you're going to impact, how many lives you're going to change. Not just of the people who come into contact with your music, but the people who are working with, for, and around you. You once said that Casper is like our Jay-Z because he knows how to play the game. Exactly. Uh, do you think you know <laughs> how to play the game? I think I'm... I'm look, man, I might not be... Uh, top 10 <laughs> top 5 I'm top 5 <laughs> <D-O-A>, <laughs> but like <laughs> but like you learn you know and you can only learn from emulating the greats that's why I, I always only have like good stuff to say about what he's done because what he's done um, not only for himself and his career and his life yeah. but for SA hip hop is the stuff of legends it's unheard of things we've never seen anybody take it that far since let's say I don't know Jabba yeah you know yeah. what I mean yeah. Jabba was the biggest you can ask Sleeka right now. You can ask anybody who was active in the game when Jabba was on and popping. Jabba was the biggest thing mm. South Africa had ever seen. And his music like sort of transcended hip-hop. Casper has been the first one of our generation to like successfully do that and have it like come back in the actual numbers yeah. where it's visible. You're like, yo, yeah, no. 20,000. You can't argue with 20,000 people at a stadium or at a venue. <laughs> you can't argue with 70,000 people yeah. at like a, um, a 80,000 arena. Yeah. That's when I knew that what he's done here three years later is is the stuff of legends. Uh, for the 2000s watching now, there used to be a hip-hop show called The Full Clip <laughs> <laughs> on YFM. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, with Scoop and Caesar Lobo, mm. man. How do you think that changed your life? For me, that was almost like the start of everything. You know what I mean? Um, 
because me and my man Summers, we was we was we was at his place in my car, see Butcher's room, um, making these little demos. Mm. Cause I always wanted to be an artist, right? Like since I was a teen. So after we finished high school, like nineteen, twenty, we work on the stuff. How were you making demos? Fire cassettes, Bruh. We had a laptop. <laughs> we had my man's laptop. <laughs> I saw we take the mic, we put like a beanie on it, <laughs> like just on top of it, and then <laughs> and then we'd like make them like we just he'd record on this program called audacity oh yeah. shit sounded rubbish yeah. but like we'd push on and, and make the songs and whoever was willing to listen to the mp3 would find a way to either bluetooth it to them mm. or like put like 10 songs on a disc like a 10 rent disc copy and what and then i, I charge you the price of the disc mm. not like i'm like yo man i paid 10 rand for this disc so mm. you just give me 10 rand and we straight and mm. then people, that's how people would take the music. The next CD, I started selling it for like 20 bucks. People still bought it. 30 bucks, the next one. People still bought it. I was like, you know what? I'm an artist. I need to go do this. Come 2010, full clip. I'm from work. <clears throat> I, I'm you working. working my I'm, yeah. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from work. I'm, I, I got a little... Um, in retail. In right? retail, exactly. I'm working at Markham. And like, I hear this show coming back because... I've been in Insomniac for as long as I can remember. So it's like 11 and I'm listening to this show. I'm from a girl's place, I think. I'm listening to this show. These guys rap. I call Summer. Yo, you hear these cats? Yeah, they nice, but man, if they give me a shot up there, baby. <laughs> so the very next week, my contract was actually ending coincidentally. The very next week, me and my man put some money together, put some uh, gas into the whip, put the GPS on his Samsung Omnia. And we were off to, mm. to, to Hyde Park in Dunkeld. Nervous as a motherfucker. It was like at least like 30 rappers outside. And you know how the process yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. Gino comes outside. Gino, he tells yeah, you how, how it's going to work. Shout out Gino. He tells you how it's going to work. He tells you you're going to wait for Scoop. You got to relax when Scoop comes. He ain't got no time to fuck around. You bust your 16 and you move the fuck on. Okay. So Scoop is like Randall Abrams. In, in, in he the doesn't A-Bop. play with you. He tells you if you whack. Rubbish. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there I'm waiting for them Bro And I swear I could feel this energy Of like There was too much confidence I was at the back of the crowd Everybody was like So Scoop comes out He's like Okay let's do this Who's, who's, who's gonna rap first Everybody was still like As my man is my word bro I just shoved I was like I'm first Yeah And then I And then I got a chance To bust my rap And I've never looked back Since then Cause that was the first time I got heard Anywhere outside of my gassy. And I never looked back since then. I just hung on. Which were some of the other rappers that were there amongst the 30 rappers that were there that, <laughs> that have popped now? Kid X was there. Kid, Kid X, X was the first guy to rap on that platform. Mm. Shout out my man Kid X. Um, obviously, the guy known as Zinger right now mm. smashes. In fact, they both got signed to Cash Time. Mm. Um, who else is there? My guy. Yeah. My guy. Um, who? 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 Those are the two most famous guys from that, from that show, I think. Yeah. Maraza wasn't discovered on that platform. Maraza was discovered probably on like another one, another show like that. But he's like an OG. Like in 2010, this guy was already the king of like uh, the Sprite uh, uncontainable mm. version that was happening at the time because he was the guy who was free st- out freestyling everybody in the country. Yeah. So he wasn't found there. I'd say, who else? Um, when did you meet Dumi the Volume? Because he's a big fan of yours, man. Yeah. Bro, I met Stog. I met Stogie in. Oh shit, Stogie! I'm exposing <laughs> my age. <laughs> <laughs> I met Doomy like in 20, maybe 12. Yeah. At like a hype show. It's a hype session show, and he probably doesn't remember this. So Proverb is performing, and he's there in the crowd, like at the back, you know, with his little Stogie just puffing on his Cohiba. And he's at the back minding his own business. Cohiba, you know? what's there, man? I need subtitles for this interview, bro. It's like a, it's like a, <laughs> <laughs> a Cuban cigar ah, of some okay, sort. Okay. You know, he's he's puffing on that, and I, I'm starstruck. I'm watching my favorite perform, and I'm watching the only other guy who's as nice as him, right there. And I'm like, oh my god, what is this? Is this a sign? So I walk up to him and I said something stupid, some stupid shit. I don't, I don't remember what I said, and he shooed me away. Mm. <laughs> he basically just shoot me away you know and then went back to like minding his business and then if you know uh instro from from um uh the guy who created nasa oh yes you know the nasa tape yeah so instro was at motif as the in-house engineer and he knows len and len had been trying to get me 
on the NASA tape. Oh. So Instro knows Lim about Lim me. And, yeah. Oh, wow. So he 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 put in a good word for me because he's my man like that, big mm. bro. So he's like he's like to him, yo, check out this guy. And 2013, they dropping this collaboration EP with my man Tibbs. Oh, mm. it was 2012 with Tibbs. It's called the All Love Tape. And Instro calls me into studio, and that's when I I formally meet the big homie Stogie. He's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I actually happened to pass him my, my album at the time to R.O.T.Y. because it dropped in 2012. And then he listens to that. I do my verse on this thing. It's not that dope. They, like, do another song. I do another one. It's super dope. And it makes it onto the, onto the All Love um, EP. Maybe a couple months later, Stogie calls me back. He's like, yo, man, we're trying to do this no sleep thing. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I, I work. Yeah. So then I ask him because I thought he didn't listen to it, yeah. but I should have known he listens to everything. I'm like, <laughs> so you heard the, so you heard, so you heard the album. He wasn't gonna brush my ego or nothing. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm like, damn, the OG ain't gonna give me nothing. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. But I learned from there, like just hanging with him. He's such a good dude, and he always has like, like so much like encouraging and insightful uh, uh, words about what, where you are and what's going on in the game and what you need to do and what he likes about you, your strong point. So he's one of the people who actually helped me build my confidence. Cause I, Got you. I, you like confidence, dude. I still, you know, people won't pick it up because eh, it's been like seven years now, eight years. But I, I was like very self-conscious. Like, am I as nice as everybody else mm. out here? No, I'm not that nice. It's I need natural, to work you're creative. You yeah, know. I need to work harder. I need to, you know, I need to be doper. I need to be wittier. I need to be smarter. I need to be funnier on records. I just need to come alive more. At that time, who are you looking up to? <coughs> like, shit, this guy's nice. At the time, I'm coming into the industry. Mm. So I'm trying to make a living, mm. you know? So that's how, I'm, that's how I'm trying to also, like, I'm looking at reason what Motif is doing for him. Like, damn. This guy's making this rack like this mm. off a rap, man. Mm. I'm also looking at obviously cash time. Mm. Um, cash time at the time, um, you know, tear gas is still intact, but my two boys, Smash and X, are signed over there. And they just like stars. It's like knowing people who are normal today and the next day they like superstars. They can't How even How crazy walk. is that, it's bro? It's so, it's like, <coughs> like they can't even just the other day. The other day, we were on this platform <laughs> trying to make a name. Now you can't even walk in public. <laughs> And, and you know, these, these uh, college girls can't contain the excitement. You can't even walk through a beer. You I couldn't walk through a beer garden yeah. with, like, the cash time boys. Because, yeah. like, the girls would lose their, their, their minds at the yeah. time. So I'm looking at them, and I'm just trying to, like, find a way to provide my fam for my family and make a name for myself using this hip-hop thing. So I was looking for all the guys who had figured it out, you know. When did you start making money from rap? My first check was probably 2013. How much was it? Three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it was three thousand. It was three thousand bucks, but it was for nothing. It was like, it was like for sh for a show. It was like, yo, man, come through for the show. I did two songs. Yeah, I was like, damn, three thousand for two songs. That's a lot. And then I started like even charging people for verses. I had the first guy who paid me for a verse. I was like, this guy's gonna pay me for a sixteen bar. In my head, it's like the easiest thing to do. Mm. But the fact that somebody's gonna give me like. Three grand for it. I couldn't believe it. But of course, I wanted more. But I was like, there's so much more to learn. And I have to build my brand. My brand has to be an esteemed brand for people to want to like associate themselves with it. So there was a lot to learn at the time. But the first check I made, it made I was over. I couldn't believe somebody was going to pay me for something I was going to do in my bedroom for free. And so, how much are <laughs> you judging for future now? Man, it depends, man. You got to be nice with it. I want 25K. But if yeah. you're nice with it... <laughs> But if you, yeah, my man said, my manager says 30K. Aye, aye. He, <laughs> he wants his cut. He wants his cut. But if you're nice with it, usually nowadays, you know, it's not like back in 2012 when I was like really starting out and trying yeah. to make any, anything I could make of it. Nowadays, some of these kids will just send me a song. If they're really good and they're really special, I'll just hop on to it. All right, cool. So what are we about to listen to now? What, what track are you going to play for Man, us Man, we're about to listen to this EP right now. It's yeah. called Piff. What is an EP, dog? I never, I never understand that. So LP, long play. EP, extended play. Mm. Get it? That's how it is. And then album, I don't know who came up with <laughs> album, but yeah. I guess so an EP like can a, vary from like six songs, ten songs, I have a few. It, it it needs to be, but it needs to, it can't be as long as an album though. Oh. It has to be like a compilation of songs. Um, I think back then when I, when I made my first EP on the annexure of the contract, it says something like 
anywhere between three, three, what, five minutes and 18 minutes running time. Something oh. like that. And not more than seven songs. Of the collective of body. Of the collective body. Okay. That's what constitutes for, gotcha. for an EP. Gotcha. And, a, and an LP was above that, but below album. 31. Yeah. 31 minutes in running time. Okay. And then an album is anything above 30 minutes. Okay. That's, that's considered right, as cool. a, Let's Let's, let's, as let's jam this, man. Yeah. Uh, All right, cool. So this is uh, PIF. This is PIF. It's an acronym for paid in full, my friend. Mm. Um, like the movie. Exactly like mm. the movie. So I even added skits from the movie. Oh, is it? Nice. Yeah. And then... Um, Do you have to get clearance for that? Uh, fuck that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, EP, mixtape stuff, man. Don't be coming at me. I'm trying to take care of the kids. Yeah. So, so the EP was basically... It's like an idea that came off like taking one skit, putting it on a song and deciding I need to drop a body of work. And then I created all the other stuff around some of the skits that I found from gotcha. watching the movie. I just watched the movie again and I was like, oh, this could go with this theme. I could talk about this. And then I created this little short um, body of work because I wanted to make it like all killer, no filler. Mm. I don't want you to like have to pick your favorite songs from like a 15 track Got you. because I haven't dropped an album since 2012. Mm. And I was like, I need to build my way to that. While I have your 18, 20 minutes, I'm going to just give you something short and punchy. So this is called Piff. Piff. And the first track of Piff is called Mama Right. Mama Right. Check it out. I got the classic skit. All right. A nigga like me, man. Mm. I love the game. I love the hustle, like a movie, man. bro. Be feeling like one of the ball playing niggas, magic. you know. Mm. Like I want to bird do magic or something. You play with the lights off. Yeah, you know when nigga got dope. I need yeah. to believe, believe. I know they got word, we still moving the product. I never ran off on the plug, and it's word to my mama. A fuck nigga broke a few promises. Not that surprise, you know, fuck niggas moving no wine. I got it from here. Promise, I promise, I do this shit. I really do this, I promise. Can nobody stop us? Dope inside the province, oh, they forgot it. No, cause I remind them I'm just being modest. Never out of pocket, yeah, I'm about it, about it. Never ever doubt it. Money where your mouth, hope is where your wallet. Versus should be worth a couple hundred thousand. Different kind of flaws, hop a thousand dollars. Different kind of sauce. Traveling the lower, different kind of sport for the little baby. Do it for the baby. Love my little baby. Gotta do it for the family. Never gave a fuck about no Grammy. No, they was never checking for no African. Do this to keep a promise to my granny. Even the summers didn't check for me. Nobody checking till the check is deep. You know, once I get it, I might let them see. A father forgive me, I might let it be. I'ma what let him you know sleep. About getting wow. rich while your ass yeah. sitting on the block. You something about your what grandmother. What you know about yeah. running hard when your boss sitting on a yacht? What you know about losing work uh, when you're wearing it for the family? I never gave a fuck about no Grammy. Yeah. I know they were never checking for no African. I do this to keep a promise to my granny. Yeah, just be, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do this to keep a promise to my granny. It's like it's it's for me saying like I see all the all the accolades and, and, and reaching for the reaching for the what, but like I'm doing this for my family, you know, mm. for my family name, for like to make my grandmama proud, you mm. know, like she's still alive. No, no, my grandmama is late, been late, like Save since nine four. Yeah. But um, she was my sweetheart, God rest her soul. Um, but like I say, like you know, to 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 carry the family name with pride, like anybody who 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 is my family, to be like, yo, that's Kimwanaro now. Look at what he's done with his life yeah. through his talent. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just to say, just to, just to say, like, yo, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm in this for. I see all the other stuff, but for me, it's about me growing as an individual and being able to take something back home. And you got any kids, or is I it got pull one out game kid, <laughs> strong pull out game weak. <laughs> I, <got a> <laughs> <laughs> I got a kid, man. I got a, I got a six year old. He's turning seven this year. Nice. His name nice. is Copano. Um, Does he want to rap as well? I hope not, because he whack, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whack, bro. <laughs> but right. I bet he want to act or something because he's quite funny. My right. kid's funny in front of. Um, he takes his mom's phone all the time and he makes little videos. He's he's actually got a sense of humor. <laughs> all right, cool. Let's go to the next track. Let's go to the next track. That was Who's uh, K Tesso? That's K Tasso. He's actually from Pochestrum as well. Mm. He produced uh, pretty much this whole tape with additional production from the in-house uh, captain over there. Explosives. Got you. got you. And the next song is called Dod. I love Dod so much. This is like. This is me paying homage to the underground. This is me keeping it raw, uncut, and just nasty. What know? does do D mean? It means do or die. Oh, do or die. It's do or die. So Got you. I like acronyms. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. That's how people like name songs. 